Hi everyone and thank you for tuning in to the Leo channel for another guest contribution. My name is Sig and I'm going to talk today about the D major scale. One of the things that I didn't mention in previous videos because I don't want to overload you with information is that actually each one of the scales, the way that we're learning them, is formed on the basis of the previous scale. And what that means is when we break the scale down into two parts, so the first four notes and then the last four notes, what you will see is the last four notes are always the first four notes of the next scale that we're trying to build. So in this case, if we go back first of all to the C major scale, we will have the first four notes, C, D, E, F, and then we have the last four notes. Now, if we take the last four notes, you will see that those last four notes are exactly the same as you would have for the G major scale, except on the last four notes of the G major scale, last week we made the adjustment going from F to an F sharp. So we have now... So what we did is we took the, the first four notes of the C major scale, threw them away, kept the last four notes, and now they become the first four notes of our next uh, scale. And so we just add the next four notes, but we make an adjustment to the leading tone. And so we have now from C going into G, and then, and obviously playing the full scale. And you can see that we have now built a new scale. So if we repeat the same process, what you will find is that by taking the last four notes of the G major scale, we can build now the next scale that we need. But because obviously the last four notes start with a D, we would now be starting what is called the D major scale. So in this case, we will take the last four notes of the G major scale, and then we're going to add the last four notes, but of course adjusting again the leading tone by increasing the pitch from a C to a C sharp. So instead of playing something like this, we're gonna play something like this. And so if we play the whole thing together, again, last four notes of the G major scale plus the four notes that we're adding this time, you'll see that we have now come up with a G, D major scale. Again. And so what you can see here is that the scales are more closely related when you go and take the last four notes of your last scale and then you build on top of that. And so now we know why we are learning them in this order as opposed to learning them C, D, E, F, and G, and so on. Because the reason uh, for how this music is, is all put together is actually relatively complicated, but I don't want to get too much into that. What's important for you to remember is that you always take the last four notes of your last scale that you played, and then that allows you to build on and create your new scale that you're going to practice for this week. So now that we have figured out what are the notes that are supposed to go into the D scale, we're just going to learn the fingering. So we'll start very quickly with the uh, right hand. And so for the right hand, we're going to start with, as usual, our number one. And then we're going to do exactly the same fingering as we have done for the C and the G major scales, which is one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. Again, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. And so if we want to go now for two octaves, we would go one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five. And so what you can see is that um, in, in this instance, the advantage of all of these scales, C, G, D, A, and E, is that all of them have exactly the same fingering on the right hand, which is one, two, three, one, two, three, four, always alternating until you reach the end of the scale. So in this case, we go back again and we play the whole thing. Again. Okay. And so on the way back, it's exactly the same fingering, but in the opposite direction. Now, 
remember that here the fingering is always the same for the right hand. So one, two, three, one, two, three, four, always alternating. And the other thing that I want to bring to your attention is you have now two sharps. So you have the F sharp and you have the C sharp for the D major scale. Since what we're doing is we're building on the previous scales, that means the sharps are always cumulative. So you can't have the C sharp without having the F sharp. And I think that is important because you need to remember that you're just adding more and more sharps for creating each one of these new scales. And so if you look at any piece, like for example, this one in D, you will see in the page that the F sharp is right there. And there's also a C sharp. And they always come in the same order. So you start with an F sharp, then you add a C sharp, and then next week when we look at A major, there will also be a, um, a, a G sharp that goes immediately after. So they always come F, C, and then if there was another sharp, it would be on the G line, or sorry, on the G space, and then so on and so forth. So what you will see is always these time signatures, or sorry, these um, structures of accidentals are always in the same order and they are always cumulative. So you can't have, again, as I said before, the F without the C. In this case, for the D major scale, it uh, is an F and a C sharp, and those, you know that they will always be like that. Uh, one other thing that I mentioned last week, and I also want to reiterate with this particular scale, is that if you want to very quickly find what is the tone of the, um, of the scale, all you need to look is, uh, look at the last sharp in the, in the signature here, on the very left of the grand staff, and the next, the very next tone will be the, uh, the tone of the, of the piece, or the main tone in which the piece has been composed. So if you had, for example, three sharps, which would be F, C, and then G, then you would know that the piece is built in A major because A follows G, which is the last sharp. So that's a very quick way for you to identify what is the tone of the piece. And so now getting back just real quick to the left hand of the D major scale, we'll, uh, we'll finish with that and then follow with the, uh, the two hands together. So when you look at the left hand, again, you start like every other scale with five. We notice that we have run out of fingers, and so we play three, two, one. <clears throat> Again, five, two, one. Okay, and then now two, two octaves together, you would have five, two, one, crossover with three, then crossover with four, and then again crossover with three. We'll see how that plays out. Crossover with three. Crossover with four, crossover with three. And then on the way back, it's exactly the same fingering, but in the opposite direction. Now, be careful not to co get confused, and then on the way down, using the fourth finger here, because you only have the third finger here and here, and then you would use the fourth finger over here, and then you would cross under with the thumb in between. So again, playing from the right and a descending scale. Now the whole thing back and forth. Now both hands together. And so that um, completes our video for today. It's very simple, but again, it's also important for you to practice one scale every week to make sure that you have memorized it, that you have the fingering down pat, because it has a lot of benefits. What I have found is ever since I started learning the scales, I'm able to learn pieces more quickly. I'm able to very quickly figure out what is the correct fingering so that if I have 
you know, part of a scale that is a run within a piece. One way or another, I know how to find the fingering very quickly in a way that is, um, that is appropriate to the hand and that keeps the hand at rest without a lot of, uh, of tension, which is detrimental always to the play. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed the, the video for today and looking forward to seeing you next week on the A major scale. Thanks again for tuning in to the Leo channel and you have a great week. Bye.